Okay, build update. It's been about three weeks. The big news of today is we mounted the engine today. So uh, there's been a bunch posted online about this, uh, this one bolt that comes in here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's sort of shrouded. There's also, from the factory, from Rotax, there is a nut that is riveted into place here probably because it's impossible to get in there easily uh, to put a different nut in there and then tighten it. Um, but the factory, sling factory, doesn't want to use that nut. Um, so you have to remove the nut. And I'll show you what it looks like. Um, so it's a nut that's welded to a little piece of metal and then it's riveted into place. I think it was like this. And so what you have to do is undo, there's like four bolts that hold this, uh, it's, it's a bracket that, I don't know, it goes from the engine mount and it holds part of the turbo. And there's actually even a, there's a, if you can see it, there's a, another one up there. And then there's one down here. So there's four total. But what that lets you do is pull this out of the way, um, this way, so that you can get in and you can drill out the, uh, the rivet so that you can pull this free. And then you can just put the factory um, bolt, the engine mount bolt, the M10 through, and then put the sling lock nut on here with all the other little pieces. So, this is um, not difficult. I think it's, it took me over an hour to get the four bolts off, get this out, and then to put the four bolts back, maybe an hour and a half. Um, it's not super difficult. It's just you use a lot of tools, um, and then it's just some, it just kills some time. But then to get a wrench in there to tighten it and then torque it, um, I ended up modifying a wrench. <laughs> and I modified this wrench. This is a 17 millimeter. So this goes on the inside here for on, on top of the nut. And you, you have to get it from the other side. And you need the cut so that you can get it out later. Um, but then I ground it down to make it thin enough so I could get it up in there. Um, and that was trial and error. I uh, ground it down, stuck it in there, um, couldn't get it to hold ground it down some more, ground it down some more. Anyways, like four times, um, and then some cooling off times because this would get hot. Um, but eventually I got it and it worked. Um, and you can use the same, the same contraption for the, uh, the lower nut on this side, but it's really, this one is really not nearly as hard. So the top two are just to tease you with easiness. Uh, they're simple and no problem. It's just that that one that takes a little bit of time. But I think uh, once we got everything ready to go, it, it took us about two hours to mount the engine. So it's, uh, it's definitely doable. Um, the prep time, I'll show some pictures. So I used a, uh, a hoist that I borrowed from a neighbor. And then I used a uh, spreader bar. And I'll, I'll show some pictures here um, of my little contraption. Um, the spreader bar that I used, um, I ordered on Amazon, believe it or not, it was actually cheaper than Harbor Freight, but it's, uh, it says 1500 pound road load rating and it's just a spreader bar. The, the neighbor who loaned me his, uh, his hoist didn't have one of these and he just had some chains. Um, so I bought this spreader bar and it came with these but I didn't end up using these. So uh, you can probably see from the picture, I used some, uh, um, gosh, I'm not even sure what they're called, um, D-rings or something maybe. Um, so I, I connected this to the engine and then spun it around and then I put chain on it that went up to the hoist spreader bar and then the hoist. Uh, again, that, that I got uh, from Harbor Freight. So, three, 350 for those two gadgets. And then I used a piece of wood 
that I cut, um, I'm not sure what I did with the word, here it is. Um, I just had a piece of you know, oak that I had in the hanger and I cut it exactly the space between the two, um, the two mounting lifting points, I should say, so that when I had my chain, it, it would keep it exactly at the right because the, uh, the spreader bar was actually just a little bit skinnier than what Rotax wanted by an inch. So I used just a piece of wood to keep the chains so that it would lift it uh, all at the same time. So, um, so that's the big thing. Um, I've done a lot of other work in the last three weeks. Actually, even before that, I did some specific updates. But I got the heater mounted, the plumbing done, the wiring done and pulled through. I have all the avionics, um, the behind the scenes, the, the black boxes or whatever, all mounted. They're all wired up. I've got to do a lot of neatening. Um, and I may actually redo this harness a little bit. I, I'm, I'm not sure I followed whatever uh, Midwest panel builders had in mind. Um, you kind of got some givens with the, the grounding and the power and uh, where everything's located, but I'm not sure I had it twisted right. So I may actually take all this stuff off, which won't take but 20 minutes, and kind of relay the harness in and do it now that I kind of have everything figured out. Um, but we'll see. Um, also put in the side panels. Um, when I put these in, I... Uh, I put some Sika Flex along this rib, or it's actually not Longeron or whatever that, um, so that it would sort of seal up that air channel going back to that vent. Um, and then uh, I did some testing with my, my shop vac on blower uh, reversed, and it does, it does blow pretty good out this hole. Not great, but it does have some airflow. I'm not sure how my shop vac on blower mode is compares to the air coming in through here. Um, this is a contraption that um, I was given the um, 3D printing files from another builder very graciously. Thank you very much. Um, and then basically what this does is uh, it comes in from the, uh, um, the Naka duct and then it has a splitter and one goes up into the normal, the normal, uh, let me zoom in on that. But, but I've moved this down um, and I get pretty good direct blowing air. I'm trying to, and then this will go to the dash. So I'm using, um, I can't remember the name of the manufacturer, but um, I showed them when I did my, my panel video three or four weeks ago. Um, they close off pretty good, but they, are, they close off about 90%. I think actually the air that comes through is coming around the little ball um, of the, the ball vent. Um, I've thought about trying to do something um, to be able to turn off the air coming out here but I can't come up with something that's easy and I don't know how to design and make fancy 3D printed on off switches like, uh, like Evan had done for his builds. Um, that's beyond my capability. So uh, we're just gonna have a little leaky vent to an extent, but I think when we need nice, cool, fresh air, we're gonna get a lot of it because this, is, uh, this cuts down a lot of um, back and forth and uh, that sort of thing. So I use Sika Flex on there. I put a little bead of Sika Flex just to help seal it. But of course, Sika Flex is just, it's so it's dyed so black, it just gets on everything. Um, I got the lights in and uh, I just got some more work to do on neatening everything up um, and getting everything. You know, this section through here is just a nightmare. Um, so I've got to kind of play with all this and get, I've just got to climb in here and just kind of figure it out, uh, get everything tucked out of the way. But, uh, I had a problem with, um, 
When I moved my plane, I don't know if you can see this, um, this is different colored paint on uh, down here. I had some uh, uh, chafing from a uh, toe strap that I had when I strapped this down to the trailer when I moved it. And then I had a couple other little scratches here, uh, here, and you can't see the other side there, down there. Um, and because this is an engine mount, I didn't want it to rust. So what I did was I sanded it down and then uh, I mixed up some of my good uh, two-part epoxy primer and sprayed like three coats on there, made it pretty thick. And then I, I sprayed a couple of coats of top coat just to further help protect it. And uh, it doesn't match at all, but um, it's an engine mount, so it's gonna be dirty soon enough. But it, uh, it's gonna protect it and keep it from rusting because I was a little worried about that. Um, but the paint went on really well and I think it's gonna be good. And then while I, while I had the paint out, I had forgotten to paint these unzoom here um, these are the uh, the door bolt covers that go inside the canopy and then these are the door hardware pieces um, that cover the door hardware in the doors I had just forgotten to paint them when I did my last batch of painting so I got those painted and I thought they came out fine and they match pretty close to the uh, the canopy I, I it's same paint same gallon um, so I felt like it looked pretty good, um, just holding it up against the, uh, the doors. Um, one thing that I also did, um, I think Evan mentioned in one of his videos, maybe even from a long time ago, that, um, this is something sling, this is on, this is a Rotax part. I can't remember if it, I think it was oriented up. Um, sling wants you to change this out to a, to a, uh, it just comes straight out of the front of the engine. Actually, it's the, it, it's the side that faces the firewall. Um, I did this before I even uh, put the engine on the hoist um, and I changed this out. It takes like two minutes. It's like no big deal. Um, but I, I thought it would be easier than once it's, uh, you know, up in here. Let me see if you can even see it. It's, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of like right in here. Um, so they want it to go straight out and this is a cooling, uh, cooling duct, um, radiator. Um, and I assume this has to do with tying into the, uh, how it flows into the heater core, um, coming up to the two pass throughs. Um, just changing the angle makes it work better. I haven't dove in and I've glanced at those instructions, but I haven't gotten to that yet. But uh, I think that's, uh, that's it for this week. And uh, I think I'll put a couple other things in here that I, I did. Uh, I did a, a, a alt static. Um, so the, for the static port, I added a, uh, a splitter and I have a line that goes back down here to the center console. And I put in a, alt static switch. I'll do a couple pictures there. Um, I put a red cover over it because I put it in the center console and I didn't want anything to hit it and it switched on the alt static. Um, and I'll throw the part number and a picture of the part. I got it from Aircraft Spruce. It's like their standard alt static switch. Um, reading some reviews, there's a similar part on Amazon, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a knockoff part and it does not have good reviews. So I paid the extra few bucks and got the one off of um, off Aircraft Spruce. Uh, I just waited until I had some other stuff I needed. Um, so basically, I have uh, I have uh, two static ports, and I think I've talked about this in another video. I have a piece of tape covering it just to keep dust and debris out. But um, the alt static is. Uh, it basically bypasses that by just opening up. It just basically opens up a hole inside the cabin and lets cabin air into the static system instead of the, the static if it gets clogged up. So uh, that was recommended. In fact, I think in the newer slings, they actually include that part. So I'll show a couple pictures um, and uh, just show you that. 
and the the red cover looks kind of cool looks like a you know your your missile cover switch or something but anyway that's it for today um again the engine's on kind of a big milestone for whatever reason it it wasn't the biggest challenge we've done it, it was not easy but it really wasn't that big of a deal so uh happy building everyone and uh until next time